Hey guys, what's going on? I just got out of the shower, dried up, and I, I actually, I've been wanting to talk about this since this morning. I just had a whole bunch of other things to do until now. Uh, this video is not going to be an easy topic for me to talk about because it has to do with Dan Slott, the writer of Amazing Spider-Man. I actually wrote a script for this because there was so much I wanted to say, but the truth is, I'm not going to cover the comics he's done because... I want to save that for a Q&A in the comments section. People are probably going to ask me my opinion on the stories he's done, or I'll talk to them about the way he writes comics. But unlike a lot of people, well, okay, some people, I've actually met him in person. So basically, what I want to do is kind of get a Q&A going, but at the same time, I want to get my feelings out for way, the way this writer conducts himself online and in person. But the first thing I'd like to say is, that this, uh, this dance lot leaving Spider-Man story, it's good news. It's good news without letting my bias get in the way, because ultimately what this means is that we're going to get a new writer who can bring some kind of fresh change and character growth to, down to the table. I don't hate Dan Slott as a person, I, I just don't like his character like I was talking about earlier online. Uh, I'm going to talk about that later in the vid. Normally, I want to promote a comic book that I can say something positive about, but he blocked me on Twitter even though he and I never actually had an interaction online. As a professional, that guy, like, he's the guy who came on board Amazing Spider-Man after the events of One More Day. God, I hate that comic. God, I think that story is still terrible. Ever since then, he's been writing Amazing Spider-Man for almost a decade now, or maybe it's already been 10 years. I've read New Ways to Die, and every story going up to Superior Spider-Man. Superior was refreshing, but it has a lot of problems. You guys ask me what they are, and I will tell you. Renew Your Vows is a miniseries that I have really respected since it was published, and I still do. I still respect the comic, because it was a return to form for classic Spider-Man in an alternate universe tale. Peter Parker works for the he works for the Beagle taking pictures, he's married to Mary Jane, he takes his life seriously, he fights the Sinister Six, Venom knows his secret identity, etc. After that, we go back to the main universe of the Amazing Spider-Man comics, and I, I, I think they're garbage at this point. Uh, the clone conspiracy story. Even though it does have some saving grace in its subplots, the, the sum of the whole is not as strong as the individual pieces that make that whole. And now we're getting the Red Goblin story that has nothing to do with what anyone thought it would be. I mean, a lot of hands... Everybody show your hand, raise your hands, and tell me if Mephisto was going to play a role in Amazing Spider-Man again. I mean, who, who didn't think that would be it? I mean, everybody got fooled. Dan Slott likes to do that. He likes to mislead his audience, his Twitter audience. Anyway, Norman Osborn coming back to bond with the Carnage symbiote. Look... I just want this series of controversies in the Spider-Man mythos and lore to end. I'm sick of stories that always go with the headlines that feature ways to make fans upset. I just want to go back to the days where you could pick up a comic and not be critical or cynical about a story. Part of the problem is that Dan Slott lets his identity politics get in the way of his writings. And to Dan Slott, look dude, I know you're bitter about the 2016 election. I didn't vote for Trump, I never supported Trump, but I don't hate anyone who does. Why should I? Not all Trump supporters, or Bernie supporters, or even maybe Hillary supporters should be painted with the exact same brush. You know, it, it is ironic to my personal opinion that Dan Slott frequently goes on Twitter and complains about Donald Trump stealing an election with the Russians' help against Hillary Clinton. That he stole an election from her even though Hillary Clinton wrongfully, I mean, she stole an election outright from Bernie Sanders. Factually speaking, I don't think Dan Slott has the right to feel the way he does in politics, considering that it's, there's a bit of irony between more than one person. I mean, there's three people caught up in this. But anyway, anyway, I can't, like, I can't tell him that he's right or wrong, because, I mean, that opinion is, is not based on reality. Or maybe I'm being too harsh. I don't know. Anyway, his politics are all over his Twitter feed. This guy is obsessed with politics clouding his rational thinking. It's like, to him, to Dan Slott, if you agree with him, you're a friend or an ally to him. 
But if you disagree on something, he immediately makes you out to be an enemy. I'm glad he's not on Spider-Man anymore, because this attitude has to go. And hopefully him being able to reflect on the fact that life fluctuates, things change. One day he'll be on a book he enjoys, and the next day he won't be. Maybe things like this will inspire him to be better to his audience. Uh, I mean, Amazing Spider-Man, the sales, from what I've heard, haven't really been at the helm of what they should be. And this is part of the stories he's done. The Clone Conspiracy, Spider-Verse. Not everything was a hit out of the park from from everywhere I go, whether it's Crawl Space, whether it's CBR, whether it's Newsarama, whether it's other YouTubers, or whether it's vlogs. And this isn't a Dan Slot or a Spider-Man thing. I don't think so. Marvel... Marvel always does this. Marvel always puts themselves through this. There are things I don't agree with Dan Slott personally about, but I think this pettiness on his part and the part of other comic book writers has to end. This man is so bitter, for example, trying to salvage a dying industry. Marvel has always been responsible for their own decline, many times. They nearly went out of business during the 90s over the Clone Saga and all the number ones and all and all that garbage. They had to get bought out by Disney in the 2000s, and just recently, Marvel Comics has had a lot of bad press in the last year. If you guys want to know more about that, plenty of other channels can do it, or you can just ask me directly. I'll give you links, I'll give you responses. Oh god, that's a different conversation, but there's a lot there's a lot of bad publicity that Marvel has um, rightfully earned for themselves in the last year. And let me give you guys a secret. You know how Dan Slott got this big? A man who works in the comics industry with like 50,000 something followers or more followers. He's probably got a lot of Twitter followers. This is partly due to his run on Spider-Man. Constantly making headlines for good or bad. And social media. Yes, it's a combination of his work and social media being there at the start. Like the, the Genesis days where the website was getting off the ground and more people started using it, and then it got popular. I mean, yeah, and this is just a condensed way of talking about how social media got big. Because if you were there at the beginning, chances are you're a big celebrity now. And there is also one more uh, factor that plays into this. Dan Slott goes to conventions like I do. He, he's a guest. I, I, I'm not a comic writer. I just go as a customer at places like that. The one interaction I have ever had with Dan Slott was this time that I complimented him on his Batman Adventures run in the DC Animated Universe. I complimented his books because I managed to read a few issues and I found them intriguing. It, basically he wrote, I think he wrote in the Batman Adventures, yeah the Batman Adventures comic book which was a tie-in to the DC Animated Universe in comic book form. And I had a question for him then. The question I had for him was something I'd like to call an interesting one. I asked him if he thought Spider-Man would end up being in Captain America Civil War in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, he would be in the movie. When I asked him this question, he cut me off a little bit to, to, to interrupt and say, Sorry, nope, never gonna happen. And this was in person, mind you. He said that the studios like to play nice with each other, and then he rambled on about how if you want to see a Spider-Gwen movie, or a 2099 film, or a noir movie, or a Mi Miles Morales film, it's all going to be done by Sony and not Marvel. He doubted the shared custody deal would ever happen at all. And this was months before it officially got announced. This was like back in 2015. Don't you guys think that as a, as a Spider-Man fan, Dan Slott should have had a little more faith or a lot more faith that Marvel and Sony would have had would end up working out a deal over Spider-Man of all characters I mean how ironic coming from him w that he has the biggest cynicism and and look and lo and behold it still happens anyway anyway the whole reason I'm making this video today was because I found out that I was blocked by him and a whole bunch of other people were too this is what I notice about Slot. He gives famous people on the internet, certain people on the internet leeway by unblocking them. If, how do I say this? A little guy like me, he's not gonna care. You can go on his Twitter feed, you'll find out that he does not care about a single individual who isn't high profile or big or famous or whatnot. Dan Slot to me has become very self-absorbed to the point where it's, 
people like Comic Story and Comic Island, Comic Book Cast 2, those big guys. If he blocked them because a lot of eyes are prying on diversity in comics and his fight, well, I wouldn't call it a fight, but his apparent feud with Dan Slott's comic writing and the identity politics position. If you, it turns out that if you follow him, if you follow anyone who has a dissenting voice in the community against Dan Slott, he, I think it's called chain blocking, he blocks everyone who, fo who follows Dan Slott's opposing voices. He blocks all those people, which which actually could mean that he's blocking his own followers as well. I don't. I didn't follow him, really. I just chimed in. I want. I actually wanted to wish him good words because there were some Spider-Man stories that I did respect based on his run. Uh, in the end, though, we're all fans. We should all be treating each other better than this. I don't like drama, but this this has to be addressed. I still. I I will also say that even if you have a problem. With what I have to say, even if anyone has a problem with what I have to say, myself and all of you, I think Dan Slott needs to learn to respect that we have to let each other have our turn. Instead of becoming so self-absorbed by selfishness that we turn into bitter enemies over comic books or any topic out of reason. Uh, and I was saying before, I don't like drama, but the best way to avoid it um, any further is to address it rather than hide or run away from the controversy or blocking people in this case if anyone wants to know if I bought uh, the Spider-Man comics written by Dan Slott the answer is no I thank my local library for getting access to his books so write to me in the comments you guys if you've been through a similar experience in talking to him or if you disagree with what I have to say Okay, um, I look forward to all the responses, so end of conversation for now. See you next time. Oh, and uh, I did write an extended script criticizing some of his comics, but also praising a few others. Let me know if you guys want to see that episode, because I, I'm going to keep the script saved, because it was a lot of things to delve into. This man has written almost over 300 Amazing Spider-Man comics. He started with issue 546, and he's going to 800, so it's um, almost 300.